Weapon platforms are one of the several new features in Modern Warfare 2. They're supposed to simplify weapon progression in multiplayer, which they kinda did, but I think this is the new feature that has players, including myself, confused the most. So I spent some time researching and testing to the point where I can explain this system in simple terms and show the actual impacts that it makes. And it boils down to three key benefits. The first being that weapon platforms create a new way to go about unlocking weapons. Traditionally in Call of Duty, progression has been vertical. Each weapon was its own unique weapon and you'd unlock them as you progress from level 1 through 55. And typically, you wouldn't see many variations of the same weapon, except for the AK-47 and the AK-74U. But when you saw this, one was an AR, one was an SMG, they were their own individual weapons. Modern Warfare 2 embraces variations of weapons with weapon platforms. Each platform starts with a base weapon. Now that base weapon could be an assault rifle like the M4 and the Kostov platforms, or it could be a battle rifle like the Lockman platform, or it could be a Marksman rifle. As you level up that base weapon, once you hit a certain level, you unlock a different version of the weapon or variation to keep the terms the same here. And this is known as a receiver. Think of it as leveling horizontally. You still unlock base weapons by progressing vertically through the ranks, but if you want the entire weapon arsenal, that's where weapon platforms come into play, where you're going to level up weapons to unlock even more. Let's take a look at the M4 platform for example. This platform has 5 weapons total. The M4 assault rifle is the base weapon, which I believe everyone has access automatically to at the beginning of the game. Once you level up the M4 to level 14, you will unlock the FTAC Recon Battle Rifle, which you can see denoted on the platform tree, and when the M4 gets to level 19, you will unlock the 5.56 Icarus Light Machine Gun. Then you can see once you get the 5.56 Icarus to level 14, you will unlock the M16. And in the other direction of the branch, when you get the FTAC Recon to level 17, you will unlock the FSS Hurricane submachine gun. Zooming into the skill tree might paint a better picture if you're still confused. So you can see all the attachments you'll unlock for the M4 Assault Rifle from levels 1 through 20. You can see once you get the 14, you get the FTAC Recon Receiver. And at level 19, you get the Icarus Receiver. And there you can see the little line that will lead you up to the M16 part of the platform tree. So hopefully all the connections make sense now. Now when you go to make a loadout with a weapon platform, you can either equip the weapon you want to by tabbing between the different weapon categories and selecting what you want, or you can go to the gunsmith and change the receiver. For all intents and purposes, receivers is just a fancy word for a weapon. As you just saw, changing the receiver is the same as physically going to a different weapon category and selecting a weapon. And for the remainder of this video, I'm going to use the term receiver when referring to weapons within a platform just to keep things simple. Receivers aren't completely irrelevant though. There is one unique thing they can do, which I guess we can start going into right now. The second key benefit for weapon platforms are shared attachments. Now Infinity Ward pitched this as a big game changing feature for weapon platforms, but attachments are shared between every weapon in this game. So if you're like me, you're wondering what in the world were they talking about? It makes much more sense when you understand that there are two groups of attachments. You have universal attachments that can be shared between all compatible weapons in the game. These are primarily optics, lasers, muzzles, underbarrels, and ammunition. The other group are called the weapon platform attachments, and these are attachments that are exclusive to a weapon platform and may be shared across receivers. And these tend to be some of the stronger attachments like barrels, stocks, rear grips, and magazines. These two groups of attachments aren't mutually exclusive though. Yes, there are universal attachments like optics that you'll have to, say, level up the M4 to use a specific optic on a pistol. There are also certain weapon platform attachments you'll need to level up one receiver in order to be able to use the attachment on another receiver, like the M16's 14-inch barrel. But focusing back on weapon platform specific attachments, hypothetically there isn't much benefit for shared attachments for receivers that are early in the platform tree because you're not going to have weapon platform specific attachments unlocked yet. In some cases, there will be benefit for ladder receivers in a platform, like the M16 for example, where you'll have some good barrel options to choose from once you get to that point. 
The actual benefit for shared attachments is that changing a receiver will actually carry over attachments in a custom loadout, which I'm going to dub as hot swapping. For example, I have this M4 loadout I've been using in multiplayer. If I select a different receiver in the gunsmith, all compatible attachments will carry over to my new weapon. The UI will tell you what attachments aren't compatible and which ones are, and in some cases you'll only be able to transfer one or two attachments in between receivers, but they carry over, which is neat. On the flip side, if you make a build that uses more universal attachments than weapon platform attachments like what you're seeing on the screen right now, I have on a common underbarrel laser and optic on this M4 and a stock and grip attachment that are platform specific but they're compatible with all receivers. And as you can see, I can swap between every M4 receiver and the attachments carry over to every different version. So that's neat. It's not going to be useful in every case, but maybe there are some loadouts I'm not seeing yet or other platforms I haven't even used yet where hot swapping receivers mid-match will be extremely useful. That brings us to the third key benefit, which is weapons in a weapon platform tend to have a lower max level. Weapon platforms typically have between 15 and 21 levels for you to progress through, whereas non-platform weapons have an average of 30 levels that you'll have to go through before you max out the weapon, making weapon platforms a lot quicker to progress through thanks to their shared progression. So that's the weapon platform system. Now that you understand it, what do you think about it? Are you liking it? Do you not like it? As with every story, I think there's two sides. On one side, it's an upgrade to previous weapon progression. The presentation of the entire system needs improvement and it creates unnecessary confusion. But let's pretend it was presented perfectly in game. The weapon platform system simplifies some progression. It adds hot swapping. It reduces weapon levels, which are all great things. The shared attachments are a nice feature too. I think that feature is undermined by the UI itself and making universal shared attachments between like every weapon in the game a thing but it's still a nice thing to have on the other side while I think it's cool they're encouraging players to try gear outside of their comfort zone some people are gonna hate it for just that rather than being able to unlock weapons individually and use what they want the weapon platform system forces them to use multiple weapons they may not even want to use just to get a sniper or something similar and this can be seen as a side grade or a downgrade so let me know which side of weapon platforms you stand on i'm leaning towards the good side please don't forget to click that like button if you found this video helpful and consider subscribing to the channel and with that i will catch y'all on the next one.